Hi y'all, welcome to Raise the Bar Ella's Way. Today I'm here to share with you another book on teamwork, The Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni. I am super excited to be starting law school this fall. You have no idea, well, maybe if you're excited to go back to school, you have a pretty good idea. But it being virtual, I know is going to be quite different for me, a big adjustment period, especially because when I was applying for law schools, the pandemic wasn't even um, a thought in my mind and had anticipated a very different kind of first year in law school. So I'm aware that group dynamics are going to be a little different and I'm very grateful of the law school I'll be attending that they have put forward a lot of efforts to get group involvement and student engagement uh, already. We're having like a virtual trivia night at the end of the month with our small groups and stuff. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But that being said, teamwork is more important now than ever because if we actually want to engage in real teamwork, we're going to have to put in a little bit more effort. And what I mean by that is it's not going to be quite as easy as sitting next to someone in class and chatting. We're going to have to do a little bit more legwork and it's going to have to be a little bit more intentional, a little bit more thought out. So. Let's just dig in. The ideal team player brings up three virtues, as Lencioni calls them, of being the ideal team player. And I'll get into a really interesting way of applying these virtues at the end, but I'll get into the model right away so you have an idea of what I'm talking about and things make a little bit more sense. These three virtues are being hungry, being humble, and being smart. And Lencioni operationalizes them in a little bit of a different way, so I'll share with you what he says in the book. So. Uh, for humble, he says, in the context of teamwork, humility is largely what it seems to be. Great team players lack excessive ego or concerns about status. They are quick to point out the contributions of others and slow to seek attention for their own. They share credit, emphasize team over self, and define success collectively rather than individually. It is no great surprise, then, that humility is the single greatest and most indispensable attribute of being a team player. And this, I think, is kind of a universal truth in, I don't want to say in life, but I find a level of humility everywhere has a lot of value to it. And there are two types of people or two types of traits that are apparent when individuals lack humility. The first is egotistical, um, arrogant people. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And the second type, although less dangerous, is still really interesting and I think very, very important to point out. And those are people who are lacking self-confidence, but are still generous and positive with others. Um, and Lencioni quotes C.S. Lewis here saying, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. I think this is about having a clear, accurate self-image to recognize where you have strengths, but also where you have weaknesses. So being humble doesn't necessarily mean being walked all over, it still means standing up for yourself, but not to excess. So the second virtue is hungry. And Lencioni says, hungry people are always looking for more, more things to do, more to learn, more responsibility to take on. Hungry people almost never have to be pushed by a manager to work harder because they are self-motivated and diligent. They are constantly thinking about the next step and the next opportunity. And they loathe the idea that they might be perceived as slackers. I think hungry can be misconstrued and get a bit of a bad rap. And the reason I think that is it's often attributed and associated with that hustle mentality. And I think I've shared before how little I like the term hustle. I know Megan Hyatt Miller um, has referred to hustle as being an immature mentality because it's destructive and it can be very toxic. My dad frequently quotes Julia Child saying everything in moderation, including moderation. And Julia Child was talking about food, and I am with her 100%. I called a little bit of pasta, a little bit of cake, a little bit of meat, a little bit of veg. I just mix it up and keep everything. But I think the same is true for something like personality traits, especially something like hungry, because too much hunger can actually be really problematic. And I'll get into some of the issues that come about when we only have one or, or two of the three virtues in a short bit. The third virtue is smart. Uh, so this I think needs the most explanation. He says it himself, of the three virtues, this one needs the most clarification because it's not what it might seem. It's not about intellectual capacity. In the context of a team, smart simply refers to a person's common sense about people. It has everything to do with the ability to be interpersonally appropriate and aware. 
Smart people tend to know what is happening in a group situation and how to deal with others in the most effective way. They ask good questions, listen to what others are saying, and stay engaged in conversations intently. This is most related to the idea of EQ, the emotional quotient, um, and emotional intelligence and those types of things. But Lanchoni goes on to say that it doesn't have to be that complex. It doesn't have to be a grandiose model. It's just about being smart about people, being aware, taking the time to observe what's going on around you, what people are doing, their body language, and then being able to internalize that, recognize what it means and react accordingly. I know I just made it sound complicated again, but it really isn't, uh, it doesn't have to be that complex. It can be a lot more simple. I'll link below, but Lencioni gave a TEDx talk about how to apply this model and he recommended doing it with your team. And this can be your sports team, your business team, your family, um, your partner, whoever you consider to be on your team, take some time and think about what these virtues mean and which ones you excel in and which ones you don't. I know personally, humility is my weakest point of the three of them. And I work with my family and trying to get them to call me out and you know, let me know when I'm when I'm lacking humility in that way. It was hard to have that conversation with them because it took some humility to recognize that I lack humility. But in having that conversation, you open up yourself to help others out too. And in a team that's really valuable because it allows you to say, I'm not perfect. This is how I want or need you to help me out. And by going first and being the first person to be vulnerable, you open up that dialogue for someone else to come to you and say, hey, Gave some thought to what you said. I looked at myself and kind of took the time to be introspective and realized that this is where I'm falling short and this is where I feel like I'm lacking and I'd love it if you could help draw my attention to that too. So the one for threes, let's look into these. So if you're only humble, Lencioni refers to this person as the pawn. So they're pleasant, they're kind, but they don't have the drive to be pushing for themselves and they don't have the emotional intelligence to necessarily know that they're being walked all over or potentially taken advantage of. Hungry only, Lencioni refers to as the bulldozer. This person is really ambitious, but doesn't have the emotional intelligence to know the impact that's having on other people and doesn't have the humility to recognize that it's not all about them. The third one off is smart only. This person is referred to as the charmer, so they can be entertaining, likable. They really have a good sense for how to interact with people, how to read a room, but they lack humility, so they're, they're looking always out for themselves and they lack hunger. And so they don't really have an ambitious drive to do much. I think we've all been on teams with someone like that. Um, the two of threes though is where it gets really interesting. And this is why I think the model has so much applicability because if you're able to look and find out where you're lacking, you can see what area you're more likely to fall into. And some of the, the traps that exist for you that you you don't want. So uh, two of threes, let's go. Humble and hungry, but not smart. One showing you refers to them as the accidental mess maker. So they're really kind and they're always looking out for the team and the general and they really wanna do a good job, but they don't necessarily know the impact of their actions on other people. And because of that, they can, um, they can make some big mistakes that need cleaning up after. Humble, smart, but not hungry. This is the lovable slacker. And I think this individual is the enemy of all teamwork because everyone I know, myself included, has worked on a team with a lovable slacker. And they're called as such because they're really kind and you know they're putting the team first and they're putting their ego aside. They're not really arrogant. They're smart, so they know how to interact with other individuals, but they're not hungry. So if you need anything done, you have to explicitly tell them, sometimes holding their hand, almost like forcing them to do it. And more likely than not, it's just gonna be more convenient to do it yourself, which just breeds resentment and inefficiencies and, and also steals the opportunity from that person from sharing valuable content in that other perspective. Uh, so it's kind of a lose-lose in that sense. And the last two off is hungry and smart, but not humble. And Lencioni refers to this person as the skillful politician. So they've got that drive, they have that people sense, but they lack that humility. And so frequently they're manipulative and things like that. They're always curating the image that people have of them. And it's a dangerous person to be around too because you'll feel really great, but you're not necessarily getting the most out of the relationship or you're not necessarily getting the full picture. So I'd recommend you take some time, sit down and kind of just 
think about which one of these areas you could brush up on, which one of these you could become better at. And looking at people in your life who you trust, who you have a good relationship with, who you can be vulnerable with, and who can help support you in becoming the best version of yourself. As always, these are just my takeaways from the book. So take what works for you and leave the rest because this is just Ella's way.